heavens and the earth and we ask him to send his peace and blessings upon our master Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family and companions and all of those who followed after with excellence up until the day of standing Ameen, Ameen, Ameen Thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'izati al hasanah Allah said call instructed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, call to the way of your Lord, bil hikmah, with wisdom, wal mu'izatil hasanah. This instruction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's an instruction of the job of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the work and the purpose and the, and the objective of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world. And the objective of his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wasn't the gatherance of wealth, wasn't the gatherance of material, wasn't the gatherance of gold and silver, but rather the purpose of his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was calling people to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instructing them and showing them the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a way concerning which he said, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet ﷺ said, Anybody who seeks a path in which he seeks knowledge, in, he, in which he seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in which he seeks his creator, his sustainer, his Lord, he seeks the one who is there for him. When all others move away from him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anybody who seeks Allah, then the pathways of paradise come out to seek him. The pathways of paradise come to seek him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to encourage his companions to come and listen to him, to come and hear from him. Why? Because his words would remind them of the next life. His words would remind them of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. His words would put their lives into perspective because life is an absolute loss unless it's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are living a life of loss, a life of misery, a life of distress, a life of anxiety. And it's only those people whose lives are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose hearts are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who live lives of happiness, who live lives of joy, who live lives of comfort, even though they might not have any wealth in their hands, but their hearts are living the richest of hearts, the most sufficient of hearts, and the most purest of hearts. We see in the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they made sacrifice for this path towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We make sacrifice for the paths of the world. If we want a job, or if we need an occupation, if we need wealth, then we will seek this person and we will seek that person. We will seek this company and we will seek that company. We will give a CV into this a retailer and into that company, seeking out where we can find jobs from, where we can find occupations from, where we can find wealth from. But was this the case of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum? They would look for enough wealth and enough livelihood that would get them going in their lives but what they would sacrifice their entire lives for was seeking knowledge about the pathway to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at the great companion Sayyiduna Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu an he traveled from Madinatul Munawwara all the way to the lands of Syria two countries he passed Ask him, oh Jabir, why did you travel from Medina to Syria? Did you go for business? Did you go to look for a job? Did you look for occupation? Did you want some estate? Did you want some land? Did you want to marry somebody? He said, none of those reasons. Sayyiduna Jabir ibn Abdullah, he said, I heard that there was a man in Syria from amongst the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who knew of a hadith who knew of one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that nobody else in Medina knew about. So I purchased a camel. What did he say? I purchased a camel. He spent money, he sacrificed. He said, I purchased a camel and I rode that camel from Medina all the way to Syria. I got to the house of Abdullah ibn Unais. I knocked the door and the person from inside said, who is it? I said, Jabir. 
And the man said, is it Jabir, the son of Abdullah? I said, indeed it is. The man from inside came out running, who was Abdullah ibn Unais. He came, he hugged me, he embraced me, he met me with, with the warmest of meetings. And he said, what's brought you all the way from Medina to Munawwara? I said to him, no business, no buying and selling and transaction and world has brought me to Syria. The only reason I have come to you is because I have heard that you know of one single hadith of the Prophet wasallam that nobody else in Medina knew. So I traveled all this distance just to hear that one hadith from you. This is why the Sahaba would travel. They had families. They had livelihoods. They had businesses. But all of that was put to aside. All of that was secondary. And what was primary in their lives was seeking how we can become steadfast upon that path which leads us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyiduna Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, radiyallahu an, the great companion, who when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated from Makkah al-Mukarramah to Medina al-Munawwara, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed in the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. He was the host of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I left from Medina al-Munawwara and I traveled all the way to Egypt. When I arrived in Egypt, I met the governor of Egypt and I asked him, where is the house of Uqba ibn Amir? He said, why do you want to visit Uqba? He said, because there is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I heard from somebody. And then I heard that this same hadith, Uqba ibn Amir heard it directly from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I traveled from Medina all the way to Egypt, thousands of miles of distance, not by plane, not by train, not by coach, not by bus, but on land by a horse or a camel. He said, when I knocked the door of Uqba ibn Amir, he came out and he welcomed me. And he said, what has bought you? I said, no dunya has bought me. No buying and selling has bought me. No land and property has bought me. The only reason I have traveled from Medina to Egypt is to hear one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where have our travelings gone? Our travelings, if you look into our travelings, are for no other reason except the dunya. How can we earn more of the dunya, purchase more of this world, and we forgot that we were a people who need to straighten up our path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were a people who were treading on a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we can only tread that path in the exact same way the way the Sahaba tread before us. And how did they tread this path? They left their homes. They left their homes, not because of worldly affairs, but they left their homes to seek knowledge concerning that path that leads them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we saw them to be a people who stood in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until this day, their names are fragrant upon the earth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us a people who seek knowledge and practice upon that knowledge. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.